Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Call O'Clock with a package from Bricklink.com, uh, one from a lovely subscriber, and, well, you'll never guess what's in the third one. Well, breaking with tradition very slightly, I'm not going to do the subscriber package first, just because I'm going to do the one that we can see right into already, with this lovely tan-coloured camel in its factory-sealed bag. There we go. Oh, first one to get my hands on one of those. Oh, well, not one of those. My first one of those. There we go. And isn't he lovely? I like the expression on his face. He looks very noble indeed. Uh, and he came in one set, 7573, The Battle of Alamut from 2010, uh, which is quite a lovely set, I must say, actually. Uh, and there are two camels available, this one in tan, another one in dark tan that I already had. Uh, once I became aware that there were two of them, I kind of decided that I needed to collect them <laughs> without a really very good reason as to why. So here is the one we got today, of course, and here is the one I already had in dark tan. Uh, and that is just a mini collection complete already because uh, those are all the colours. So I've got two grey oh, saddles for them and some saddle bags which kind of represents their load for both of those. There we go, just like in those Prince of Persia sets. Uh, and then I've got this guy in his kind of black turban and outfit. Uh, yeah, he looks very appropriate. Who can be leading them down, well, Brick Nottingham High Street, I suppose. But then why? I guess they're just lost? I don't know. But anyway, maybe it's a fun scene. Maybe something else needs to be going on in this scene. So uh, ideas for that, greatly appreciated. Uh, but I better put the stuff that I had before to one side and just have him waiting here. So yeah, really good start. Uh, but let's get on to the one I'm most excited about, which is this one from Rick. And Rick is from Learmonth in Victoria, uh, to the west of Melbourne, mate, with a lovely lake there. Uh, I better stop doing my Australian accent before you all get very offended. Uh, <laughs> that's what it was, by the way. Uh, there we go. Uh, and I tell you what, we've pretty much got Australian weather at the moment because it is boiling. It's making filming very hot work indeed. But oh, here is the box from Rick. We've got a small letter here and some bits and bobs. Oh, we've got some Aussie koala bears. <laughs> Feared income. Oh, I said I'd stop that, didn't I? <laughs> Brick parts. Oh, here we go. Right, get rid of the box. So we have a note. Shall I do it? In no, I'll do it in my accent. There we go. Good day, Robin and Mrs. Hood. Uh, thank you for your fantastic Lego videos. I hope you can use the enclosed items. You are very entertaining and put out really good content. I hope, I hope it never stops. Uh, well, <laughs> that's the plan at the moment. It'll have to stop at some point. It's really tiring. But anyway, <laughs> I'll keep going for a while yet. Thanks very much, Rick. P.S. The koalas are clips, by the way. Yes, I've seen these before. You kind of grab their arms and clip onto something so they can be drinking tea or something like that, can't they? So I'll put them on my mug for now. Australia. I love Australia. Fair dues. Lovely. Thanks very much for those, Rick. And then we've got all sorts of little stuff. We've got some bags. What are these? Are these stickers? These seem to be stickers of real-life products which I think is a slippy slope, because if you start using these in your city, then, well, where do you stop? But we have got all sorts of brands here. We've got Huggies, Colgate, oh, it's all supermarket stuff, tea, coffee, watermelons, croissant, freezer stuff, ice lollies, <laughs> all sorts of things here. So there's loads of stickers there for use uh, in a supermarket, or it looks like, with real life products. We've got not official Lego kookaburra. Now, kookaburra, if I'm not mistaken, is a kind of parrot from Australia. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, he's quite fun, actually. And if I'm also not mistaken, I think these things are quite destructive and they sort of tear off all your wiper blades off your car and stuff like that. Or is that the Australian, uh, New Zealand one, rather? There's a sort of different uh, New Zealand uh, parrot that's green, I think. But anyway, so this will make a, mu a right racket in the trees, presumably. So I need a zoo or something like that. I'm not a massive fan of zoos, I must say, in real life. Unless they're for conservation, uh, because, well, I think animals are best where they're supposed to live, really. So this one says, super secret police. And contains, lo and behold, four members of the super secret police. 
which is very opportune actually because I've pretty much run out of these guys and I need some more for a big uh, SSP build. Enough of the Siren already. <laughs> uh, so that's really good. So we've got two with the body armor with, yes, that written on the back. <laughs> I get rid of the robot heads, obviously. And then we've got one of the biker ones, uh, sort of scribble cop or bad cop uh, with the, uh, what I use as a biker outfit. And another one, oh, a third one with also with the body armor. So that's really good. Yeah, because I think that's the best bit. Oh, and the helmet as well. Is that the branded one? No. Is that the branded one? Yeah, that's the branded one. That's the best helmet as well. So they're really cool. I would definitely be using these, Rick. Oh, we've even got a spare cap as well. Brilliant. Oh, yes. They'll get used no problem. What else we got? Fairground Ninjago Ride staff member. Okay, so this is probably some sort of Ninjago minifigure. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I see. It's one of the skeletons with the great big... Uh, skull and red eyes and missing teeth so yeah that's good fun mad max bikers oh you have been watching all my hauls you might see some more of my mad max bikers later oh wow got some good ones here yes now i can't remember all their names but i think i've got her or at least one of the versions of her but look at that head that is just brilliant and with the uh, fantastic uh, mohican hair very good oh and this one with the I think that's called Faith, isn't it? Uh, and with a sort of, uh, golly, what would you call that? Armour all over the lower part of the face. So yeah, that'll add to my biker gang. Absolutely perfect them. Got some coral coloured pieces from under the sea, no doubt. With a bit of coral, a clamshell and a sort of flower piece. Then we've got fairground employee. Oh, lots of things we're putting straight into the city. Oh, I've got one of these, but... There's no reason why I can't have two of them selling popcorn, either in different places with a different head, maybe, uh, or even just two of them working at the same stall. Maybe I'll change it for a female face or something like that. We can have an, a his and hers popcorn sellers. So that'll be really good. Fantastic. Thanks very much for that. And I like the fact we've got midi legs on that. So I could even make one person taller than the other. That'll go down really well. Uh, and then we've got a bigger box which is either Minecraft or it's just using <laughs> this box for recycling purposes. Let's see if we can get in there. Oh yes, all sorts of random parts in here. Oh, do we do have instructions? Oh no, it is the official set. So he said 20,000 bricks under the sea parts. Oh, I see, because it is an underwater Minecraft set. Right, okay, well I have to build this then. I don't really know anything about Minecraft. We definitely got a fish, got some... Uh, uh, pieces that we can use there. We've got a torso. Yeah, a couple of torsos could work and some sand-coloured plates and so on. Another bright bits for coral and so on. Yeah, very good. I'm sure they'll come in very good use, Rick. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for that. I'm going to pause the video, do a bit of a reset and get on with my package from Bricklink.com. Well, if you want to send something to the channel, you can do what Rick did by sending it to Robin Hood Bricks, PO Box 11048 in Nottingham. NG89QS, but if you are sending it from abroad, do remember to mark it as a value of $30 or lower, uh, or 30 euros or 30 pounds, because otherwise I'll have to pay a customs fee to receive it, and that can get quite pricey. So yeah, it's annoying that uh, that is the case, but uh, yeah, having to pay to receive things is a bit annoying. Anyway, thanks again for that, Rick. Straight into this uh, Bricklink package, and we've got quite a mound of stuff here. Uh, now, the note that I wrote on this order was Condiment King, because uh, some of you will know that for quite a while I've been collecting parts for my own Condiment King, just getting it parted out cheaply. And this is the bag I've got so far. And you can see, well, there's two parts missing, but the most obvious is the torso. In fact, the head's missing as well, but I don't want that because I use yellow skin tones in my city. So that should be in this order. Let's see if I can find it straight away. Mm -mm -mm. Must be in this one. Let me tip this out. I can reuse these nice Lego bags. Oh, very mixed bag, quite literally there. And let's see if we can find the Condiment King one. Is it in there? There it is. Ho, ho, ho. This has been a long time coming. You know, I could have just bought one, but they were about sort of 15 pounds or something. And I thought, oh, I can't pay that for a single minifigure that I'm not even that, uh, <laughs> it's not that important to me. Uh, so I'd get it in little bits here and there. And to be honest, it adds to the fun of collecting, uh, getting it for the best price possible. But there is a very 
nice condition torso. Possibly one of the very few in the entire country that's left for sale. And it means that I can build my Condiment King. Uh, which I'm not sure if I should do now or not. But anyway, so he's got a backpack. Oh, I think I need some more pieces to finish that. So I'll put that to one side. But that is an awesome purchase. Very happy with that. Uh, let's go on with the rest of the minifigures while we're here. We've got quite a few hidden side... Uh, kind of train staff, I suppose, all from the set 70424, Ghost Train Express from 2019. Uh, and it was just because I decided, although I've got these exact staff members on my subway, uh, I thought I wanted some different ones for my tram line as well. So I think I'll put these on the tram as well, because since I've got two trams now with two drivers, one at each end, so I need four people. Uh, and I didn't really have enough, and I didn't want them being the same as my train drivers. So I thought I'd get four of these guys. So there is one. Now his name is Chuck, uh, presumably because he throws non-ticket holders off the trams physically, <laughs> if they haven't been paying. Uh, he looks old, but, you know, he's rock solid. Uh, don't mess with Chuck. Anyway, that's him. And then we should have parts for a load more as well, because we could have one on his way to work or something like that. So we've got another male version there with cap. Oh. Uh, and then another male version. Oh. Got heads rolling all over the place without cap, it would seem. That's annoying. So I need a red cap. Then we've got two female ones as well. And she was called Miss Santos, but I've already got Miss Santos. So I'll just use different heads and hair for that. It's quite nice to have sort of specific uniforms for each. I like that. Very similar, but quite different as well. Mix it up a little bit. Then we've got a few heads. We've got another one for my motorcycle gang, kind of Mad Max style-y. Uh, and this is from the character Daddy No Legs, which I actually got the other week, didn't I? Um, but essentially, I like the head and I can use it again for another biker. <laughs> He's got a very weird expression. It's kind of war paint on. Uh, so he only came in one set, 70652 Stormbringer from 2018, uh, but also as a poly bag for that uh, Daddy Longlegs character. And then an absolutely amazing find, if you ask me, is three of the same head. And they're a bit expensive, but I thought I absolutely have to get them all that they have because... I'd never seen it before. It kind of passed me by. So on one side, whoop, just throw it on there. Uh, on one side, you've got the very sort of familiar face that you probably recognise as Benny from the uh, Lego movies. Uh, and he's just doing a nice smile there. Nothing too crazy. But the other side, da, da, da. Wow, <laughs> he's deeply in love, isn't he? And I just thought I'd never seen a Lego face with big eyes with hearts on that I could use in some really amazing scenes like that one on my beach where the guy's sort of walking past some very attractive Baywatch babes uh, and might be having this face instead of the one he's currently got. But yeah, they're going to be great for some interesting scenes. So ideas for using these. Uh, now these only came on one set, which is the uh, 70848 Sistar Party Crew from 2019. Uh, and I guess I never saw it because he was always wearing that helmet. Must have always been in a down position whenever I saw the pictures of that. And though he's Quite a cool minifigure anyway. Uh, I didn't know about this. Otherwise, I'd have been straight on it. And that is pretty rare and hard to find as well now. Um, just because, well, not many people bought that set, I suppose. It's not a very great set, in my opinion. But uh, if people knew that that was in it, they might have sold a few more. So we can give these to a few of these. <laughs> Got a Mr. and Mrs. Uh, ugh, tram driver deeply in love now. I mean, just look at that for a, a romantic scene. Oh, there's so much in love. Right, so that's them. And I can probably give this actually to my Condiment King. I'll give him the other side for now, just so we can put him together. Because I didn't want to get the skin tone face that was available um, on the original. Which is another reason for actually trying to part it together, if I'm honest with you. So the point of this guy is that he was a bit silly. And I thought I could use him in my fairground. Uh, essentially, he's uh, from the set 70920 Egghead Food Mech Fight from 2018. Uh, from the Lego Batman movie, of course. Uh, and, well, I just thought he could be in my fairground firing ketchup out of one side of his backpack. And mustard out the other side onto people's hot dogs. 
and that'd be kind of a gimmick uh, at the fairground. So I've got one more of these whip pieces, but I do need another one of the guns in the correct grey, which should be part of this order. And then I've got my red stud ready to go for the ketchup so we can actually fire that off. Pew, pew, pew. So that is almost <laughs> a dream achieved. Let's pop him there. Oh, and he's very good fun. So I like him. I like the fact as well that he's got his underpants over his uh, trousers. So that's a really good touch. That was the, probably the funniest thing about that film, wasn't it? The fact that they had loads of absolutely ridiculous uh, superheroes like Polka Dot Man and Calculator Boy or whatever it was. <laughs> Very good fun. Uh, it would have been fun coming up with a short list of those. I imagine they came up with absolutely loads and had to whittle it down to just enough for the film. But um, <laughs> you could come up with some really, really silly ones. Somebody was suggesting actually for the build at uh, my uh, harbour having some sort of fish orientated superhero to uh, live in that as a hideout. So, yeah, they're all sort of open to these ideas. Uh, so this was just a minifigure I didn't have and looked a bit different. It's clearly a pilot with harness on and all the rest, but no real sort of logos or anything. So I can use it anywhere. Uh, but this was a pilot in the jungle sets, uh, three including the 60162 jungle airdrop helicopter from 2017. And I didn't like those sets at the time, but they are growing on me with time, uh, no pun intended. Uh, and uh, in that one, I really like the landing craft, the sort of boat thing with the ramp at the front and that cargo load that the helicopter should pick up. And um, oh, and the tiger as well. Yeah, very good indeed. So, yeah, I, well, I could put this in existing uh, aircraft in a city or a future one. I've got no idea, but I just like the kind of all the straps, really. It's just very interesting figure that I can hide away on the inside of a craft and never see it ever again. <laughs> oh wow, I really went for these, didn't I? Uh, so these are from that same uh, Disco Kitty set, uh, Sistar Party Crew 70848, and these are the tail of Disco Kitty. And I was going to use these under the sea as kind of wafting uh, bits of uh, sea life. Uh, and I already got about six. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen more. Golly, that is uh, an absolute load. I don't know what the collective uh, noun for uh, kitty tails is, but I've definitely got a big one of it. <laughs> oh, now this is very interesting. This is the kind of dual tail piece that came on the set 4620 Air Operations HQ from 2002. Ugh, that is not a very good looking set, is it? <laughs> so I guess the tail uh, on the upcoming uh, jet set for City isn't at all new, really, with this sort of split uh, kind of system. It has been on a couple of real life planes, apparently, though I'm not familiar with them at all. Uh, I already had one of these very interesting tail pieces with a different pattern on, which I've actually hooked out. And that's very bright as well. That's from the uh, sister set, 4619 Air Patrol set from 2002. Ugh, that's another hideous uh, set. <laughs> anyway, I wanted both of them to do kind of a build at the same time. And I'm going to kind of use them very creatively that way up. Uh, and I thought I could use them as two kind of paragliding uh, devices or sails or whatever you'd call it, with a man kind of strung underneath. And there'd be... Uh, flying around in the skies of Brick Nottingham, hanging from my ceiling, and kind of a person lying underneath each one, because maybe they jumped off a nearby cliff or something like that. I don't know if that's going to work that well, because usually they aren't this bent. Uh, but, yeah, I think it could work. Uh, if not, more ideas for that. Uh, yeah, having a pair of them with these sort of bright patterns on, that's, that's what really got me, uh, you know, with that idea. I've already got some skydivers over the city, so it'll be more crazy people who like jumping off very high things. You wouldn't catch me doing that for all the money in the world. So anyway, I'll put that there. Very nice indeed. Uh, then I've got two more of these uh, kind of windscreen end pieces uh, that I've used on my carriages for the Flying Knotsman at the end of the passenger carriages, kind of like that. And these are very rare in that they only came on one specific uh, Star Wars set. But it might well be that they're becoming a lot more common uh, because they are actually in part of one of the new Monkey Kid sets, 80043, Yellow Tusk Elephant from this year, 2023, uh, where they're on the sides of the great big elephant. So maybe they'll be available on bricks and pieces uh, and you'll be able to get them or I'll be able to get loads more to make uh, more railway carriages. But 
I only just found that out. So I bought these at relatively <laughs> high cost, just in case I wanted to do one more carriage for that one day, because, well, you've got to buy them when you see them. And uh, once they're gone, they're gone. So that's why I got mine. I may regret it when they're available for about 40p uh, later on in the year, perhaps. And that set's quite annoying, actually, because it's sort of the same idea that I was having for my actual mammoth uh, with my Stone Age um, people that I was going to have, my cavemen and cave women all over that. Sort of a great big um, mammoth with loads of stuff on the top and maybe a king and a sort of driver for the thing and all the rest of it. But anyway, not to worry, I'll still do mine because mine will be a totally different theme given it will be sort of cave people. So still happy with that. Hey ho. Right, uh, some plates for my deep sea cabinet. Uh, though we have done the sand level now. I think I was desperate for more of these at one point and now I've got them by a different means. So will they get a waste? I don't think so, but they aren't as urgent as they once were. These I bought because they're in dark grey, or old dark grey rather, and that just makes them a bit more exotic for use in my deep sea cabinet. So we've got a few of those. Put those over there, I don't know why I'm stacking them. I'm going to pull them apart in a minute. Got some dark blue kind of higher end bits of tentacles. Uh, so maybe I can add some of the green ones on the end or some of the glow in the dark ones. I've even got some of these as the sort of deep sea squid. It's part of the Aquanauts sort of line. Uh, but these will probably be a plant under the sea and we can have something sticking out the top. Who knows, you could technically probably get away of adding one of those onto the end of one of those. <laughs> It'd be a really interesting sort of plant for under the sea. How would I connect that to there? Yeah, not entirely certain uh, immediately, but anyway. Black one by six plates, don't know what they're for. Uh, one bracket, oh, I do remember what that's for, that's secret. Oh, and the same secret is going to use this, actually, which is just a windscreen piece. It's been on loads of sets now, including the uh, train, the passenger train 60197, or even the trams in my city uh, from the 60097 City Square set from 2015. Uh, so, yeah, I won't tell you how I'm going to use that and that, but they'll be very fun, I can assure you. Uh, and then one panel piece in green. Uh, and the reason why I've got this is for some stickers. So let's see. Here we go. There were some stickers, just one sheet. Yeah, nicely protected with cardboard. Thanks for that. And it was just for this one, really. It comes from the uh, friend set Heart Lake. Uh, surprise, surprise, City Restaurant 2019. Uh, and I bet, you know, the catalogue of all the friend sets must have more starting with the letter H than the entire rest of the alphabet put together, if you think about it. Every single set's called Heart Lake something or the Heart Lake this, Heart Lake that. I mean, get some variety, guys. Anyway, um, I got this mainly for the sort of tags and graffiti, but primarily the sign which I've already got on my uh, facade of a restaurant, uh, but I thought I could have another one on the same piece and have that uh, either built into a wall somewhere or maybe just standing up on another part of the city as an advert. So that plus La Locanda uh, will be uh, very colourful somewhere or other. We'll have to decide where. Uh, and that means in, I think, in Italian. Uh, so you can get food there and presumably stay over as well. But... Um, yeah, I've not seen any rooms attached to that. Maybe it's on the bit behind the facade. Cool. So that's very nice. We've got a nice menu there as well, I'm just thinking. And one there. I don't think I used that before. Maybe somebody's holding that menu. I don't remember that one. Uh, it looks like it does need using, though. It's pretty cool. What's it going? A one by 2 tile? Yeah, I like that. Or just stuck on a wall, maybe. I'm going to check out whether I used the last one. And if I didn't, uh, use it, basically. <laughs> so there we go. That's that. Oh, two more bags. This one's quite small, so let's power through this one. We've got oh, some inverted slopes in black. That's for this secret thing here and a modified brick. Yep. And then the very important pineapple body piece, which I already had one of on my mall. Uh, and this is just a second one of those from the set 41397 juice truck from 2020. A friend said, it's, it's funny, it's not the Heart Lake juice truck. <laughs> So that's one under the letter J at least. Uh, but yeah, I had a suggestion from ages ago on the mall to try uh, my pineapple, which is right on the top of my tiki bar, to use two of these pieces so we could have them back to back because the pattern's not on both sides. So if I have two of them, then I can have them each facing outwards, of course, and have one sort of sprig of the green bush on the top. 
So I'm going to try that, see if it looks good. I tried it on LDD before, it didn't look awesome, but this was quite cheap. So I thought I'd try it in real life and see if that's any better. Uh, and if so, that person, I guess, is owed a bedoying, but only if it works. Du -du -du, watch this space. <laughs> And here's another bag of goodies. Just push this back a little bit. Create some space to tip these. These look like the small ones. Right, now that's for the secret. That's giving you absolutely no clue at all. <laughs> if you get it, you're an absolute genius. That is two. I'm giving you loads of clues now. You can almost search for sort of sets that have got all these parts in. Ah, now this I've wanted for a while but haven't been able to get it. Well, usually, because when I bought it, they've sent the one by one kind of little tile with that's an egg. And uh, this is the two by two one, obviously. Uh, so they made mistakes. So I technically bought this about three times, but now they've finally got it right. Uh, and I was more confident that this one was gonna be right, to be honest, because uh, this comes in that uh, Egghead Food Mech Fight set 70920 with the uh, Condiment King. So the fact that they had his part uh, suggested that they probably had that set at one point and therefore probably would have the egg. So why do I want this? Uh, don't know. Again, uh, I've just bought it because I don't have it. And if I think of a funny scene where a huge egg, kind of an ostrich egg, needs to be broken, then there we go. And I know you can get, that might be the next animal collection, I know you can get ostriches. They're also from the Prince of Persia sets, I think, actually. Um, so maybe there's some ostrich eggs. We could use those really big eggs. Ooh, that was the SSP, but I don't think they found me. Uh, yeah, so I could get those big eggs as being uh, ostrich eggs, and this could be one that somebody dropped. So there's an idea already. Then I've got loads more bits in Old Dark Grey for Under the Sea, making my rock faces nice and interesting. Got loads of these tentacles in lavender and in dark pink, it looks like. Lots of these sort of bush pieces. And I could use these just with sticks on just to represent uh, sort of, um, you know, brush or something like that, even add them to my new sardine factory build as some sort of growth in the walls or something. But I think I'm going to use them under the sea with loads of other things attached to them just to make them really interesting. These four uh, jellyfish pieces, so you can attach kind of a dish on the top and have loads of tendrils coming down from those. And I think there was another build I was going to use these for. Oh, that's right. I used a couple on my um, uh, SSP spy balloon. Uh, so this is to replace those. I've still got enough for my um, uh, jellyfish. Yeah, those are just uh, cheese wedge pieces that I am replacing ones that I pilfered uh, to do another build recently. Ah, and there is our gun. So I can add this that I already had. Ooh, for our ketchup. Ooh, and ooh, hold on, I need to plug that in there. Our condiment king. He will help you furnish your hot dog or your burger or your monster mega burger with all the condiments you need. Hey, <laughs> doesn't he look great? Really like him. I will change his head out because uh, I don't want to waste this wonderful head on him, but it's great for demo purposes. Yep, he's going straight into the fairground. No problem. Wow. Very happy with that. So another project achieved. Another tick on my list. Another thing to cross off. There we go. What else we got in here? A few other pieces, uh, brackets on, and quite a few of these hinge pieces. Now I got these because, as you'll know from previous hauls, I bought these from the Neptune Lab, uh, these sort of yellow base pieces, uh, and you need a few of these. Oh no, hold on, you need them a bit higher, don't you? That's why I put that brick on. You need a pair of those for every one of these, so you can attach the blue dome onto there. Oh, don't snap. Oh, that's not working. See if I can do it this way. There we go. That was a bit sturdier. And then I can start playing with these to incorporate them into my undersea area. Oh, yes. So, yeah, that makes it look really good. So I'd probably hide that one at the back and have these filled in. Yeah, I've got two or three of these now. So, yeah, that'd be really good. Oh, and I was contemplating using them sideways or something like that. But they always need the hinge pieces. Not just so you could open it, but just to hold it in place, really. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, fragile at the moment. But anyway, you get the idea. So that's why I got loads of those. So that is absolutely everything, actually. A very mixed order, uh, a very mixed haul. Obviously, we've got the camel, 
which I absolutely love that I had to buy on eBay on its own. <laughs> Relative, well, not, not ridiculous expense, actually. It was quite reasonable. Uh, we got a lovely package from Rick from Victoria, uh, Western Melbourne in Australia. Cheers, mate. Uh, and then we got this lovely order of all sorts of wonderful pieces. My favourite's got to be the Condiment King, but I'm looking forward to experimenting with our paragliding. I'm looking forward to including these guys in our tram network and using arguably the best Lego head I've seen for absolutely ages uh, in some scenes. Ideas for that one. Uh, some new members of the Super Secret Police. My Biker Gang uh, for the fairground as well. Loads of parts for Under the Sea. A few bits for something special. A few bits to start off, maybe another carriage. I've already had the idea sent in of uh, kind of a carriage for royalty or something like that, a very important person, but maybe you've got another idea for a carriage for that. Uh, more advertising and uh, yeah, really good haul. Well, a very nice haul, very diverse set of stuff, I think you'll agree. And that's before we even get to our new koala friends. So <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and I've just noticed a really interesting kind of shell one by one tile in this Minecraft set. So yeah, I'm gonna get that open as well. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And if you want to send something to the channel, like Rick did, then you can to the usual address. Do remember to mark it as $30, pounds or euros or under if you're coming from abroad. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, uh, I think I just have to continue on with my harbour build, uh, building the sardine factory and whatever's going to go next to it. You give me loads of awesome uh, amendments that I'm going to have to do uh, at the beginning of the video. Uh, looking forward to doing them because some of them were absolutely great, I must say. So uh, yeah, we'll do that on Friday if I can survive this heat. Whew. So until then, see you. Right, Bruce, you want some ketchup on your snack, mate?